Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live this Friday morning from the CNBC TV at Motor Roosevelt Studios. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues uh, Nigel and Surbhi joins us on the program today. Guys, hi, good morning. Hi, morning, guys. So, uh, we could have said, thank God it's Friday, but we uh, can't. Because, uh, <laughs> we've got a working Saturday and then we've got a very interesting Monday lined up. The Festival of Democracy is coming to Mumbai. Well, that's right. And uh, yesterday, what a surge we had in the final hour of trade. So, Prashant, let's take the cues forward. Well, uh, one just hopes that uh, we have some follow-through yes. today. And uh, because, you know, yesterday it really came out of nowhere. It was like a rocket. And started at about 2.15. Till then, it was, you know, one was whining and uh, wailing about how markets were ignoring the strong global queues, etc. But, I mean, 2.15 on, the market took off and never looked back. And we ended a solid 200 points plus. Uh, and that should that should have been the day from 9.15 on, right? Because, I mean, overnight, the uh, global queues were so strong, but nothing of the sort. It only began late in the hour. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it uh, did quite well. Now, <clears throat> huge volatility, as I said. But the Nifty finally closed above the 20-day moving average. I mean, there is one constant feature of the market. It is, of course, uh, a fair bit of volatility, 40, 50 points here and there. I mean, nothing. Uh, now, now, overnight, it's not, of course, nothing like the handover we had when we came back yesterday morning, same time. It's more subdued. Uh, Nasdaq is down about a quarter percent. You've got the 10-year yield in the U.S., which is up about four basis points. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's back at about $4.4. Dollar indexes come up a little bit. But, of course, I mean, day before, you almost had a 1% fall. So, we are still at about 104.5. Uh, you had some data points which came. Uh, so, U.S. jobless claims, housing data, industrial production, they all were mostly sort of slightly on the dovish side. Only one thing out of the uh, sort of uh, 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 on the industrial production side, uh, numbers which kind of worried the market was the import prices, which were very strong. And that kind of talks to the strength that uh, retail and consumer demand is, uh, uh, is, is exhibiting in the U.S. You had some Fed commentary as well. So you had, uh, you know, the Fed's Bostic uh, warning that uh, shelter inflation is significant and merits watching. Now, this is housing, right? And uh, a lot of people, a lot of economists, senior economists have made the point that, you know, this component could turn things on the dime. I mean, you know, uh, expectations now, of course, gathering towards a rate cut, probably the first one sometime in September. Uh, but this is the data point, which I think is uh, worth watching the most. Oil prices up another, uh, I mean, we are basically back at about 83. That's been the range, 81 and a half to about $83. So nothing very much to take away. Just to tie all of this back to our markets here, uh, and, you know, we put the data, this data point yesterday as well. Uh, the FII shots versus, you know, the local longs. Uh, and one was looking at the, I mean, you know, in the, the cash side, uh, we did, I mean, FII sold, but they sold relatively small, some 800 shows worth of stock. Locals, of course, bought. But the fact is that on the futures, uh, future side, uh, net shots in index futures is still about 2.57 lakhs. I mean, actually, day on day, that went up a little bit. Uh, so that is interesting. So there was no real big covering or anything on the uh, from the FIIs. Client long positions, and when we say clients, we mean H&Is, family offices, the local smart money. You know, that actually went long, uh, is, is now long, 2.8 lakh contracts. For clients, it's the highest ever. For, uh, for On the FII short side, it's not the highest ever, but it's pretty high uh, at this point in time. So I think, you know, we'll have to kind of uh, watch this closely and how this resolves. Uh, you know, while we were reporting on markets in the last hour and looking at the surge, uh, one was wondering whether some of this actually is going to look different uh, and uh, FIs perhaps are coming back to cover, not yet. Now for the Nifty, you know, the level to watch out for on the upside, we closed above the 20-day. Uh, 22,422 is the first number. That's the retracement of the fall that we've had. Uh, so that's the first level that, which the market needs to cover from where we left off yesterday. Uh, and on the way down, the 40-day exponential is 22,273. Uh, and hopefully that should not break. That's about 100 points away from where we are uh, yesterday. And then, of course, yesterday is low. Big swing day. So 22,054 is, is that number, which is the low yesterday. Bank Nifty broke above the swing high of 47,957 yesterday. Uh, on the way up, the 20-day, which is still not conquered, that stands at 48,190. Uh, again, very, very <coughs> numbers are very close by. And final level for the Nif Bank Nifty to take out would be the 61.8, which is 48,832. Once both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty get their head above and do a solid close above the 61.8, I mean, then you can kind of talk about uh, regaining the uh, earlier highs, etc. But first, you've got to do that. Gift Nifty will come up on your screen, and uh, that should tell us how uh, a trade, how the sort of at least the opening is set up. It's a quieter kind of a start, 20 odd points this morning. Sorry. Prashant, there are absolutely I mean, nothing much to report, I guess, from yeah. Wall Street action. But there's uh, plenty of action right now in Asia. I just wanted to point this out. 
Uh, the much-awaited Chinese data is out and it's looking quite mixed and markets across our neighborhood are also sort of a little all over the place, more down than up. Uh, so uh, mixed trends from China, we should put up the Hang Seng. Yeah, so these indices are a little volatile right now. Retail sales for the month of April have come in lower than expectations at just about 2.3% growth. That's year-on-year -year growth. But uh, industrial production, now that's really improved in April in China. 6.7% rise. This is again year-on-year. -year. The pace has picked up even on a month-on-month -month basis. So that's good news. But then there's also the, the fixed asset investment data, cumulative for the first four years. That's looking weak. Real estate investment data, that's looking weak. So it's a little uh, sort of mixed. Markets are digesting that. Let's see what kind of cues that we get from our neighborhood. But just coming back to our market, I mean, uh, so I was looking at the fall, and the fall has been almost 1,000 points, 973 points to be precise, from the peak. Uh, the peak was hit on the uh, the 3rd of May, and uh, the, we're talking about that peak being 22,794, so just a shade below the 22,800 level. Now, the market has recovered almost 63% of that fall. However, it's been a very choppy and volatile recovery. That's the issue that we're talking about. The other trend, absolutely no sign of FPIs. When I was looking at yesterday's numbers, so I thought, I'd, let me look at the data, the final data for the year as a whole as well, and those picture, that, that picture is a little dismal, uh, because look at the numbers. In May, we've seen the highest sales so far, FPI sales of about 27,600 crores. The net sale for the year as a whole is about 24, uh, 25,400 crores. Yesterday's numbers, of course, will uh, come on your screen as well. Yesterday, the selling was uh, to the tune of about 780, actually a lot lower than the four-digit selling that we've gotten used to. And DIIs, as usual, were big buyers, over 2,100 crores of buying. But the biggest story is in the bond market. Where are the FIIs? They're not coming to the equity street, but they're definitely going to the bond street. And we all know what the, the triggers there are with the uh, inclusion of India and a lot of the big global indices. So look at that net inflow of over 44,000 crores in the debt market, whereas there is an outflow of 25,400 crores in the equity market. And that in debt inflow is already looking very smart, even if you look at the whole year picture compared to last year. Anyway, that's a word on the fund flows. Yesterday, there was a bit of a drop in, uh, in volatility in that last one hour surge as the expiry factor played out, but the VIX is still around 20. Uh, so we have to take that on board. Perhaps we will still have to deal with more of these election jitters, you know, more reaction to the announcements, to the data that's, uh, you know, that the whole electoral process is throwing up. Uh, and in terms of results, we have a couple of interesting ones today as well. Just putting that on the table as well. So JSW Steel is going to come out today. Uh, then we'll have some interesting mid-caps. There's Balram Porcini, there is Bandhan Bank, and some of the PSUs which have had a good rally, NHPC, SCI. There's also Sobha from the real estate space. So uh, an interesting bag of earnings also lined up. But, uh, you know, Nigel, how do you look at things? Well, uh, you know, uh, the advice has been don't write naked options. Mm. And it's known as naked options for a reason, right? Because yesterday, you know, if you wrote options, you got whipsawed. Just take a look at the move that we saw in the final hour of trade itself. Yes, it was weekly expiry. And that's why we did see such a big move. You know, from around 2.15 uh, uh, p.m. odd, you know, we saw a rally of close to around 350 points odd. So naked option writing is a strict no-no. Leave it to the experts. Just avoid it totally. And we made this point in the last few days as well. So that was one of the reasons why we saw a bounce. The other point is, you know, we had a release coming in from uh, the EC with regard to the Lok Sabha turnout. And what was encouraging is that in phase four, you know, the turnout is higher than what we saw in comparison to 2019. Till now, we were worried, you know, that the turnout actually was a little bit lower. So that could be another point that worked in market's favor. A higher turnout is what you're looking forward to. Before this release, in fact, we saw that the turnout was a little bit lower, which was worrying markets. So that was encouraging as well, given that now we are factoring in that in all probability, we should see continuity. And that's what the stock market wants. Next up, the flows. Yes, the FIs are selling, but they're selling relatively less. And I look at it as the FI and the DI number together. And the total number that we got yesterday was a net buy number of around 1,300 crores. That's the highest that we've seen in May 2024. And that's encouraging as well. So these are the few reasons why we did see a bit of a bounce. One would say, well, there is short covering that's played out. Actually, the FIs didn't really cover their shots, uh, you know, in yesterday's trade. They added some mile short positions and they unwound some positions as well. And the absolute number is at around 2.5 lakh contracts. And I've made this point many times that if you're comparing it to the earlier data, well, then effectively, the total short positions is at around 1.25 lakh contracts because the lot side is, itself has changed. So effectively, if you're comparing it with the earlier time, then it's around 1.25 odd. We've also seen 1.75, 1.9 as well. But a net short market is what you want because they get trapped on the, on the, on the wrong side. And that's what push, push, pushes up the markets. 
Which brings us to the levels then. You know, the near term resistance is around 100 points away from there. If, in fact, we can get past that, then all eyes will be on a fresh all time high that we're looking at around 22,800. 22, and around the 22,000 odd mark, that's where support is, and that's where the 100 DMA is at as well. The 20 DMA is going to be very crucial because the Nifty did conquer it in yesterday's trading session. We ended around 70 points higher than that. But the Nifty Bank, well, it was a relative underperformer. And the 20 DMA is around 200 points away from those levels. So as a trigger for today on the bullish side, this is going to be the crucial mark that I'm looking at. A mild positive start is what you're looking at. Yesterday, we saw a big surge. Well, the bulls will want to build on to the momentum that we saw yesterday. And the levels, as I placed for you on the screen, a net short market is something that we like. Uh, absolutely, uh, Nigel, I'd agree with that. Net short market, I mean, for today, and in any case, we're moving to a big, big event, which is yeah. the 4th of June. You've got a net short market on the FNO side. You've got a market where FIs simply haven't participated on the cash side. So depending on the outcome, uh, there could be a massive moves as we get closer to that date. You know, well, I'll make one point, Surabhi. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <clears throat> so, uh, of course, elections, uh, the results are going to be on the first week of June. The market usually gets it right. Mm. So, uh, uh, you know, if uh, the market senses that uh, this is there is continuity, mm. I would say that towards the end, right, as we go into that last week yeah. into the elections, the market should rally. It, I, I right? see where that's coming from, and that right. sounds perfectly it logical. Should, yes, it should rally. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All, but, but strange <laughs> things do happen. I was in the newsroom in 2004. That's true. All right, when that uh, famous... Uh, uh, India the, the, Shining didn't quite... So yeah, I mean, you know, we'll come, uh, yeah. it's life. Strange things happen, but mm -hmm. I would st I would say that the market usually, because collective wisdom, right? It's yeah. all opinion combined, and you see that price, and the yeah. price tells you uh, what the what the collective kind of wisdom is showing. So you know, it's doing what it is doing, but uh, it should kind of reflect uh, what what the actual kind of outcome is going into the final thing. It could happen in the last few days. It could happen yeah. four days, five days out, but it should happen. The nerves of a nifty trader in this season. I and mean, really, kudos to uh, all the traders who are managing to do this. Well, with that, uh, let's move on to some money market views as well. On the rupee, Lakshman V of Federal Bank says that the US dollar index weakened to a one and a half month low due to softer US inflation, while crude oil prices fell to a two month low. Although euro and pound were trading at more than a month's high, the rupee was under pressure due to equity related outflows to the tune of $3.3 billion in the month of May so far. In the coming sessions, he expects USD INR to trade in a range of 83.30 to 83.65. Okay, well, on bonds, we have uh, Lakshman and V who says that Indian government bond yields declined, tracking a sharp drop in US peers as inflation in the world's largest economy came in lower than estimated. Uh, it's raised rate cut bets this year. India's CPI for April is at 4.8%. And that was in line with expectations. In the coming sessions, we could see the 10-year benchmark bond yield trade in a range of between 7 to 7.12%. Well, we've got a lot of stock-specific action for you. we get to that in just a bit. For the time being, though, we run you through the list. We're looking at Biocon, Vodafone Vedanta, Concord, Endurance Technologies, Crompton, and Keynes Technology. All of them will be reacting to positive news flow. On the flip side, PB Fintech, 